Hi ladies, in today's video I want to talk about how we can begin to heal our wounded feminine energy. So I'm going to share with you some ways in which the wounded feminine expresses herself through us in our lives and then also some practical things that you can do to, to support you in healing your wounded feminine. When we heal our wounded feminine, it really it allows us to access our intuition, our inner wisdom, and it allows us to become sovereign in our lives. It allows us to reign in our own lives like queens. The way that the wounded feminine shows up often is when we present ourselves as victims. When we wait for others to rescue us or for others to take care of us or for others to decide things for us. And often this is not conscious, right? We don't think that we wait for people to take care of us, but in our actions and in the decisions that we make and in the way that we communicate and in the way that we go about our everyday lives, often we don't take up a lot of space. All right, so this is how this energy expresses itself, where you pull back your energy, you pull back the, the personal power that you have, and you wait for someone to come and make it better for you. All right, and part of how we can begin to heal is to understand with compassion that we can mother ourselves. We don't have to wait for someone outside of us to begin to take care of us. Some of the more practical ways in which this, or, or the more obvious ways in which this shows up is when we struggle and suffer from burnout or chronic fatigue, we can use our sexuality and our words to manipulate others to do what we want them to do. That's a very disempowered way of going about in the world. Right, And when we begin to heal our wounded feminine energy, you'll find that in the sovereignty that you stand in, in the assertiveness and the boundaries that you discover and that you can then uphold, you're able to magnetize and create and attract the things in your life in a way that supports you, in a way that's nurturing to you and to others. And you don't have to go in roundabout ways to get what you want. You can simply ask for it. Now, I think the, what's important to mention here is that this, this um, wounded expression is underpinned by shame. So we feel a lot of shame from society, from our culture, we, we feel shame that we have to be further in our careers or we have to be better mothers or we have to be thinner or we have to have less wrinkles or we have to have more like on our Instagram posts. Um, and there's, there's like a whole list of, of shoulds, things should be in, in a certain way. So here's the thing, as long as we perpetuate the shame, Right? As long as we show up in ways that reinforces, I should be, you know, fill in the blank. We are deepening our own wounds. We are deepening that wound of not good enough, not lovable, or not worthy. So how can we turn this around? How can we stand stronger in our own sovereignty? How can we have better intimacy? How can we deepen our connection with others? How can we trust ourselves and our inner wisdom? And how can we embrace our emotions and integrate those parts of ourselves that we feel shameful about? And I want to share with you three practical things that you can start doing straight away. And the first thing is to celebrate your successes. And I'm not talking about, you know, achieving your goal and then having a few glasses of Prosecco or whatever, and then carrying on to the next milestone. How often have you stopped and really felt that sense of achievement? 
or allowed yourself to fully revel in that satisfaction and that joy of what you've just accomplished. I know that in my life, I never really stopped for very long to celebrate. There was always the next thing to achieve. And interestingly enough, when we celebrate, it allows us to access some of our sensual pleasure as well. Celebration is a pleasurable aspect. And the invitation then for you is to next time when you have achieved something, doesn't matter how big or how small, is to pause and allow yourself the time to celebrate and to fully experience you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, energetically, allow yourself on all levels to fully experience the joy and the sense of achievement. So the next thing that I want to talk about is to get energized. My teacher Jenna Ward says that our body is the only instrument that we have to play. And Getting energized to me means that we practice sacred self-care. You can only give as much as you have available within you. And first you need to support and sustain yourself before you can give or express or create into the world. So as women, we've got so many things that can support us in energizing our bodies, right? We can, we can look to Mother Nature for following the cycles of the season and we can align our lives and our responsibilities with where in which season of the year we we are in and what we often tend to do is we find ourselves in these seasons and we resist that we want to be in the spring and in the summer seasons we are we uh, which is light and and joyful but when we find ourselves in the more darker seasons like autumn or winter, we resist that. And that's part of what perpetuates the shame. We're making ourselves wrong for the emotions and the experiences that we are having. So it might be a good idea to explore a little bit which season of life are you in right now and how can you embrace that and then the final point is to open ourselves to receive all right that is the final practice that you can do to support healing your feminine energy the feminine is about receiving the masculine penetrates and the feminine receives so a really easy way in which you can learn how to receive or practice the art of receiving is to say thank you when people compliment you Instead of saying, oh, and dismissing it, just say thank you. Also learn to ask others for help. Ask for help when you need it. There's a big um, vulnerability risk when we ask others for help. But that is part of how we open ourselves, open our hearts to receive, is to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and to say, hey, look, I can't do this on my own. Please, can you give me a hand? So I'd like to hear from you now, which of these sound the most delightful? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it and also share it with someone who you think might find it helpful.